Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming. So I'll try to explain acoustics in half an hour. It's already a big challenge. So I'm from um, from Portugal. Uh, so CEO of Art Novian. It's Nat. He's one of our engineers at our R and D. Um, well, I'm talking about. Uh, I'll try to talk today about acoustics a little bit. So it's just sharing experience and sharing some. Um, I don't know. Um, some of the acoustics w we've been doing so far. So um, I'm sorry for my English; it's not perfect. So I'm from Portugal. So, but I try to to keep um, you know understandable. So, nevertheless, not it's native English can actually uh, translate a few things I can tell, try to say. So, uh, there is a lot of companies acoustics across the world. So, uh, and uh, I normally so been studying and doing research in, in uh, some universities. There's all the time, so people talking about why and why this brand is better than others and why why I should use this or, or that. So um, I try to explain a little bit why. Uh, one of the things is um, I'll try to focus today about low frequency. So that is one of the critical points, I think, in room acoustics. So, um, But before, so I'll, I'll a little bit introduce about that and so why, who, and where. So this is the most key values of Art Novium, so we, we try to be uh, performative, we try to optimize, be friendly environment, so exquisite design, professional installation, advanced woods technology, unique support, project support, educational resource, and uh, try to be as much supportive. So we try to cover as much as we can in terms of uh, 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 service. But then, of course, we are a team. So, but then, where we are located in Portugal. So, and why I'm showing you this? Because Portugal is a is very good area to build, you know, clothes, uh, wood crafts, and a lot of uh, different areas that is there. So this is important because when you build acoustic products, you need to have a knowledge. You need to have, you know, very, very, very uh, sensitive with materials. Otherwise, we easily changing. Uh, you know, small details in construction that change the effects on, on the product. So this is why we 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 are actually have, a, have advantage being there. So saying that, so why we need acoustics? And normally I use this kind of uh, comparing thing because people understand cars normally. So and you know, speakers is look like a car. But then if you don't have a nice race track, you, you're not really getting the best of our car. So what does mean you have like a, a Ferrari, something like that, you don't have a racetrack to run? Of course you can run a Ferrari on normal roads, but then it's not the same. So speakers and rooms, they are combined together, so they, they need each other. So I like to have a, a nice speaker, but I also, we need to have a nice room. So this is why we need acoustics. So otherwise, it's no joy. So I think it's really, really important to understand a little bit what acoustics, what acoustics do, and of course, you know, you can have a fuzzy image, or you can have a clear image of the audio system or the sound. So, what does mean really acoustics? Acoustics, people think it's only insulation or only acoustic treatment. Not. Acoustics is a combination of both. So sometimes people say, well, I wanted to treat my room, and just say, well, I want to insulate my room. So sometimes the people say, well, I wanted to insulate my room, but that's how they try to tell it. I wanted to treat acoustically the room. So, um, Getting absorption in the room also can be insulating because it's taking energy out from the room. It can actually improve, you know, the, the the energy or decrease the energy. So you are actually insulating. But the thing is, we need to also to take off the sound internally. And you know, making a speaker inside of a room is already making a speaker like inside of the tube. So the tube has their own resonance, their own resonance that can interfere with the speaker. So that's it brings you um, a lot of problems if you don't really take care of your room. So then the room itself has a lot of reflection and also you have different speakers playing. So the combination between surface, between the speakers and also the, the reflection across your room actually gives you a lot of problems because you have different reflections, different uh, sound source and gives you all these interference when you are in the center of the room or different parts of the room. So. And to understand a little bit more about sound and how sound behaves in the room, we need to go to the ground or the basics. So we actually try to work out the particle 
air of the air. So it taking uh, to understand that particle, say, well, that particle is moving, so they have velocity and pressure. So that velocity and pressure creates a multiple um, compression and refraction you can, where you can create our waves. So looking to explanation of what is sound we normally use at the uh, our um, you know simplification on physics and math you have like a sound wave which which repeating across um the space and it give you you know reflection and all all these interferes but then we talk about sound wave we talk about phase so that phase actually interferes a lot because different position in time or different position in space actually change in phase because the dark sound is to have a small distance compared to the reflexive sound. So when that, that's the same sound combines together in space and actually can can have cause problems. So what we are looking for? Low frequency is one thing, high frequency is another thing, and middle low frequency is another thing. So we need to understand about sound differently. We don't treat sound and say, well, that is a panel, there is a absorption, and you just looked at the product and it will solve all the frequencies. No. There is different techniques you can take for different, um, uh, for different jobs. So this is why it's really, really important to understand how sound behaves uh, on space. Saying that, you can see um, high frequency looks more like a reflective say, um, a reflective uh, light. So if you have a mirror, you put a point of light or laser, you can see the, the, the angle they are reflecting. But low frequency does not. Actually, the room is so big, the actual the, the wave is not reflecting anymore. They are actually doing like kind of a, um, um, a sound pressure distribution or sound velocity distribution. So if you're in the middle of the room, for instance, for a particular frequency, like 40 hertz, something like that, the fundamental, yeah, on the velocity area, you, know, you cannot hear anything. But for instance, for the first harmonic, which is the double of the, the, um, the frequency uh, wavelength, we are actually on the pressure. So changing space, you know, we are changing actually what you are hearing in the room. So that inter interacts with the, your, your sound. So looking to the high frequency, if you see, the first sound wave can imagine could be our direct sound. Then the second wave would be uh, another frequency. Then the two waves working together, you can see the example. Looks like you know you are with different waves, but actually in in real life it's not like that because they are sharing one particle, and that sharing particle means they are sharing force. If sharing force, so what we end up with? is that last wave, so there is cancelling and summing. So what does mean that? That when you have a reflection on the wall, different frequencies, on your listening position, you are actually hearing different things, and changing, actually changing in what we hear in frequency response. So that is the kind of a mass extrapolation for two-dimensional, but we have a third-dimensional height. So, in compared with three-dimensional, uh, you know, system in terms of acoustics, it's really, really, really complex. So this is why acoustics starts to be a little bit more complex. Then, what we have? Reflection. We have. You can ref have the reflection in the room. You can have absorption in the room, and of course, you can have other techniques, which is not killing totally the the the, the wave. But also, uh, we use the energy. Actually, we are coming from the the the, the, the side wall. So what we do, we do the diffusion. So uh, it's, you cannot see, but it creates different small waves that gives you um, a diffusion factor. So it's a kind of reusing energy or recycling energy of the, your sound. And then. From reflection and you know taking care of uh, of the the RT, you have different. Um, you have a concept which everybody knows, which is the relation time. In general, you have dead space and live space. What that means that so less vibration time and higher vibration time. So it's when you go like a opera, you have like the room it resonates itself with a lot of reflections. It's important because it's a gain in energy, because the reflection adding energy to the sound source. But when you go to the studio, a broadcast studio, 
Everything is killed, like almost an anechoic chamber. So there's different space, and there's actually a right RT for different space, and we can recommend as an acoustic design. So looking to what we have to treat wounds, we have a porous material, helmet resonator, can use diffusers and membranes. So this is a different technique you are using for treating acoustically a room. You can actually go for high frequency treatment, you can go for low frequency and mid frequency. So we need to look uh, at this, this different aspect. Look into absorption. What kind of absor techniques we have in terms of absorption? We have the you know, rock wool, you have uh, foam, you have whatever kind of that materials, but actually that kind of materials only works not only in... Uh, actually, that, that, that technique only works in velocity. So they increase the resistance of the material, so they decrease the velocity, and you are taking the, the, the energy out. Out, uh, the energy from the sound wave out. But then, you know, to that, that kind of, of, um, uh, of technique, it, it recurs when the pressure and velocity, when you go farther from, from the wall, actually the velocity increases, but when you stay close to the wall, the, the velocity increases the pressure. So that means that product is works when you are far away from the wall. But then, this is why for high frequency with small wavelengths, that's easy to absorb. But when you go low frequency with the big wavelengths, I, was, I, I showed you before, so you can imagine, it's really, really hard to absorb. So this is why porous materials normally work very well with mid and high frequency. When it comes to big wavelengths, they are not so efficient. So this is one of the things. Then you have the membrane and helmets uh, resonator, that kind of the techniques are more specific for the low frequency because they work with pressure. So they have a particular uh, pressure uh, zone that will generate a resonance on, on, on the, the, the volume, according to the mass of that volume, the air uh, are inside, then generate and creates a uh, velocity that will absorb that energy. The membranes are resonated at a particular frequency with the pressure, then translate in velocity. Then you have a social material or inside of the box of the base trap and actually takes the energy out. So this is why foam or rock wool works well and, and, and velocity, but then pressure, we recommend to use helmets, resonator, and membranes. So high frequency absorption um, with the uh, porous materials. Mid-low frequency, we recommend to use helmets, resonator, and membranes. So diffusion. What, what it means, diffusion? Diffusion is when it only one single point, the reflection, they create a multiple single point of reflection, so it's dividing the wave in small wavelengths in energy and creates like a distribution energy across your room. So there is a different te techniques in terms of diffusion. There is a multiple source, so we can create like a, a, a changing geometric diffusion, which is bending the, the surface or angle the surface you can create you know, the diffusion in different directions. Then you have a phase diffuser, which is different depths. You're changing the phase of the wave. You're kind of rotating the, 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 the direction of the wave. Then you have the absorption, um, changing amplitude diffusion, which is using the, the, the absorption. We can actually ch changing also the direction of the wave. And then you have also Sometimes we combine things. We just combine some of for, for high frequency, for instance, you combine the geometry, for the mid, mid, low, you combine the, the absorption, and you can have different aspects of in terms of the diffusion. Sometimes we call these hybrid products. Then room acoustics. No. We know, I will touch soon on the low frequency part, but then just clear out the mid and mid high frequency. So we are actually in a room, we have a source. Then you have a typical reflection with time in terms of energy. But then, what we should do? When we take some uh, of uh, absorption on the first reflection control or even the ceilings, well, what you're doing is just decreasing the f on the first milliseconds the energy. Then, when you're actually adding diffusers, like adding extra you know, information between the first reflection and the, odds, the other reflection, the scattering the reflection room. So uh, this is makes you a little bit more energy, more controlled energy. But then, when you're adding absorption and diffusion, you are balanced all the reflection. 
Why this is important? Because if you have a spark reflection and different reflection for different zones and distance, that means you are increasing the phase rotation. Because time means phase. If time means phase, you can cancel. And if you have a comb filter, typical room, and if you have cancelling all this uh, um, the sound we have on spectrum. But once you have multiple reflection, because the, the, um, the phase shifting is so small, then actually not destroy your sound. So wherever you are in the room mixing reflection, actually you guarantee the sound that it, and that the spectrum is almost to be the same. So this is why combining and controlling energy is really, really important. So a room without acoustic treatment, a room with acoustic treatment. So that makes you a little bit more flat response. Then, of course, there is normative to according to this. But then, low frequency. That is critical most of the time. So we, the wavelengths of some room, the wavelength, the low frequency wavelength is so big, then, then when that length, or the wavelength, match the size of the room, they actually change to create a feedback, generates extra energy, amplify. So this is not what you want. And in some zones, they well, have like a pressure zone, we have like amplification, some zones with a velocity zone, can hear anything. So this is why moving across the room gives you different sound on the low frequency. So this is really, really important to understand why. Typical room, you know, just looks at the uh, stand wave, and then, of course, velocity could not be against the walls. Why? Because if you blow something against the, the wall, uh, it, it, they are the, the past the wall. So that means the normal behavior of the wave, it's like pressure on against the walls. You know, as you go far from the wall, you increase the velocity, pressure, velocity, and pressure. This is for the normal stand wave. But then, actually, to generate, um, actually, our ears is not perceive velocity. They perceive pressure. This is why we all the time amplitude we call the model of, of P. So, and then, we have on a simple room, low frequency, for instance, you have a pressure zone, velocity zone, pressure zone, velocity zone against pressure. So this means moving across the room actually are changing in terms of response. But then, so this is an example in 3D, what we looking at the resonance frequency. But then, we actually don't need the full wavelength to generate the fundamental of that resonance at that room. We just need half the wavelength. So, and this is actually the fundamental of the low frequency part. So what that does means, that means, for instance, for uh, uh, a room with a length of five meters, we have a frequency response 34.3 hertz at first uh, resonance mode. But then, if you have a look to the room, position A, you are under a cancellation. Position B actually is more and less energy. We are not really cancelling the room. But then, position C, you have a lot of extra pressure. But then, if you go to against the wall, and everybody goes against the wall, and you see all the sound booming. So natural, because pressure is there. What happens if you combine the first harmonic? The same, position A, you have pressure, position B, cancelling, position C, okay, level, but then position D again, pressure. So, when you combine all the modes and the low frequency part, actually, for different frequencies, different position, you are creating this crazy, you know, behavior of the room. This is why, taking consideration all the Speakers, they can, can control the low frequency part in tune and also control the resonance mode. It's really, really important. So this is why we've been actually um, researched on the last two years about low frequency. Because when you treat the low, low end part, everything above starts to be controlled. Of course, we can need to control the first reflex, and of course you need to use diffuser, but we need to balance. But that's easy. So every company you find in the world, they take care of that. But not everyone can really look to this 
uh, at low frequency. If you look to the spectrum, high frequency, 1,000 and 1,000 and uh, 1,000 and 1,000 and 1 hertz, you cannot notice the difference. But if you hear 20 hertz to 21, you can feel, you can really, really f notice that changing 1 hertz because the way we hear. So we propose to divide the low frequency part in low, low, low mid, and low high. So taking care of different parts of the zones and tune bass traps for different areas to make sure we are doing the job. So this is why we've been researching, like using like a wall bass trap for treating like 80 to 100 hertz. Then we have the uh, 80 to 60, you have like a tunable bass trap, which is uh, fantastic because you can actually use that product as a membrane, putting on the corners. And by changing the weight of the membrane, actually it's, uh, the principle is very basic. It comes from the passive radiator. So adding ma uh, mass, mass to the membrane, you can change the frequency, you can tune. So it actually increase the performance. So we've been researching on that. Because one of the things we found out, Elmont's resonators are not so efficient as membranes, low frequency. What's the problem with membranes? Hard to tune. And another thing, when you are tuning membranes, and normally they do plates, they do like a, a metallic plates or they do like a wood plates, but it is really hard to, to tune because the materials, the MDF, so that material is changing constantly. So the youngest, the young mode, the youngest um, factor is the K, which is the stiffness and the mass, it's you know, you cannot control that value. So what we present here is just, you know, the rubber gives you the K, the spring, and the mass of the membrane, the wood version, it gives you the mass. So the spring is constant, but you're changing the mass. So this is why we can precise define the tuning of the membrane. So this is why, this is what you purpose. So this has been the research we've been doing uh, during this year. So one room with the 15 meter cubics, one unit, actually can take out 2 dBs almost, so which is fantastic. So, you know, 90 plus 90, it's not, you know, 180, it's 93. So then this is uh, something we, c we already understand. It's a lot of energy to take out. So uh, we propose some, uh, con something different. We propose the room size against the number of a base trap, for instance, you know, 90 meter square room size with a typical uh, high ceiling, 2.73 meters high. You can actually say, well, this is probably for a curve of 3 dBs. We need probably six or seven by step of that. So we are proposing something really new, which is people don't normally they're asking me. This is a question I have been people have been doing for me. Say, well, how many by step I use in my room? So and uh, well, well uh, we need to make the the match measure and test it and no. We did that, we did that uh, uh, research, so to, to help you guys. But then there is missing one of the part, which is the sub-area. Sub-area is critical. A lot of people have been asking for the 40s and 60s. So this is really critical because, and also the wavelength is so big, and the energy we need to take out from that wave is so high. We are presenting now a triple core membrane base trap. So in the same volume, you actually putting it all in three membranes. So, and this gives you um, 2.7 more effective performance than anything else you find on the market. So that's what, what we do. It's just damping the energy of that particular low frequency, trying to um, reduce as much as we can. And of course, the DSP can help to the rest. But then what you are adding, it's a possibility you have in a room a rigid walls adding a damper uh, material that actually, you know, can control your uh, low, f low wind. So this is why um, we, uh, well, for 15 years I've been working in acoustics, all the time we're asking, I have a problem. <laughs> so what's the problem? I have these 62 hertz, I have these 78, I have these 80 hertz, it's booming in my room, so, or cancelling. So this is why, uh, Combination between speakers, combination of the room acoustics, it's doing the perfect uh, pitch to the, to the, to the results. So, uh, yeah, we have different, you know, approach for absorption, uh, combining, combining the, the hair gaps on the impedance on the back of the wall. So they have an app, it kind of help, helps you to measure the room. Uh, well, new lines we've been releasing right now, and a few rooms we did, so... Um, 
Well, thank you very much for your presence. And any question?